But we'll get started. My name is Lauren Brown. And I am the Children and Family Minister at Brookwood Baptist Church in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, I have been in full-time children's ministry for 16 years. I've been at Brookwood for four years. Uh, I love children's ministry. I love working with children. But most importantly, I love working with families and encouraging that discipleship process in their homes. And so that's what I get excited about. Uh, this is my family. Uh, this picture is a few years old. Um, because I come to realize that I'm not in any of the pictures. I just take the pictures. And so my kids are older than this right now. Um, but this is my family. Uh, my husband is Huey. And we've been married for our, our next anniversary will be 20 years. We've been married for 20 years. And we have three children, Gordon, Jack, and Kate. They are 7th grade, 8th grade, and 10th grade. So my life is crazy. And it is wonderful. And uh, so we, we have a great time. But we're here today to talk about children and preschoolers all the way through like fifth and sixth grade. And we're gonna look in our Sunday school classrooms on our Sunday mornings or on Wednesday nights, whenever we do our teaching, and we're gonna look at the way we teach. So how many of you have heard about uh, learning styles before? Raise your hand if you've heard learning styles. Okay, raise your hand if you know what learning style you learn best with. Okay, so you, so you are aware and you know, uh, you know how you learn the best. Um, so when we have our classrooms in a classroom setting, we are going to look at how our children learn the best, right? So we shouldn't just have one way of teaching. We want to have multiple ways of teaching because it's our goal as teachers when our kids leave our classroom, we want them to have learned something, right? But we also want them to be excited about telling others. So mom and dad, guess what I learned um, in Mr. Anthony's class? Uh, we did this and he let me do this and it was great and I learned this. So we create that excitement when we change up the way that we teach in our classroom, and it's not the same way. Um, and learning styles can help us do that. So when we look at our classroom and we get to decide, okay, th these children learn like this, then we're able to incorporate different activities to help them learn in the best way possible. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We have three different learning styles that we are going to focus on. And so what we're going to do first, if you look, uh, you should have a quiz. If you don't have a quiz, hopefully that's coming here soon, so I apologize for that. Um, but you should be able to take a few minutes and just answer the questions on the quiz. It looks like this says learning styles quiz. And so just take a few minutes, fill that out, and we're going to find out what your learning style is. Okay, we're going to take a minute to talk about um, all three of these learning styles. So first we have our visual learners, which we know that they learn by... How? Seeing. Very good. So that's your first blank. If you have your handout that looks like this, the first blank is going to be your visual learners because they learn through seeing. How many of you, when you took the test or you visited with your neighbor, feel like you would be a visual learner? Okay. So the majority of this room feels like they would be a visual learner. What does that mean? How would you be able to learn better? Um, what would help you learn better if you're a visual learner? What does that mean to you? Okay, so visual aids, PowerPoint, pictures, pictures. Mm -hmm. acting out the scene. Mm -hmm. Someone acting, watching them act out a scene. Mm -hmm. Very good. So those things are all really good. We want to use pictures and colors. We want to have object lessons, right? That will help our visual learners. Note taking, allowing our kids to take notes, allowing our kids to use highlighters to highlight the Bible. That's visual. That helps them remember things um, for highlighters. Flashcards, putting things in order, like organizing things. That's all going to help our visual learners in our classroom. How many of you feel like you would be an auditory learner? So that's where you're going to uh, learn through listening. Raise your hand. Okay, so about two or three. So that's a, oh, four. That's a smaller group in here. How would you learn best if you're an auditory learner? Mm -hmm. Listening. Repetition would help a lot. Mm -hmm. Saying it out loud yourself. Okay, very good. So repeating things back, saying things over and over again, uh, rhyming. Like making up things to a rhyme, making up a song, listening to music. All of those things would help our auditory learners. Very good. And the last one is kinesthetic. Um, so if you're a kinesthetic learner, raise your hand if you think you do better by doing, right? Okay, so that was about the same amount of people that were our visual. 
Um, and our larger group was the, um, no, our visual was the larger group. They all raised your hand, right? And so the auditory group and the kinesthetic group um, was a little bit smaller, about four or five. So if you're a kinesthetic learner, what helps you? What helps you learn? Hands-on Hands -on activities, right? Doing things. Very good. What else? If you need handouts, um, Ms. Nakia will, will hand them out if you weren't able to get those. So our kinesthetic learners definitely would help hands-on, right? So physical, having that physical object in front of you, um, being able to act things out, maybe having some breaks so that you can have some movement, like if you're talking for a longer period of time or it's a longer Bible story, giving that little bit of break so that they can have some movement. Um, and that, that helps them a lot for our kinesthetic. Very good. Um, if you're looking at a percentage it tells us that our visual learners are statistically more. So about 65% of our learners are gonna be more of our visual learners, and about 30% are gonna be our auditory learners, whereas 5% is gonna be our kinesthetic. Uh, that surprised me when I was doing my studying because I figured kids are gonna be more like doing and wanna be up and be active, um, but it's really still the same, it's visual. They're wanting to see things happening and watch things, have maps, have posters, do that kind of thing. So that was 65% are visual learners, 30% uh, are auditory learners, and 5% are your kinesthetic learners. So um, any questions or thoughts about those? Yes, Miss Julie? I'm going to say that for the visual learner, the over-decorated classroom is so distracting, they will not learn. That's a very good tip because they're going to get distracted easily because they have all of these things that are going on in their brain. Uh, very good point, Miss Julie. Um, so what our goal is today is our goal is to um, think about all of the learning styles and the way that we learn, and we don't just learn one way, right? So as we're creating our lessons for our small groups, anytime that we're going to have children in our classroom, um, we are going to um, want to think about the way they learn. So I've got six stations that are set up around the room. We're going to break up into groups, and we're going to go through each station. And on your um, handout that you have, your listening guide, it has some questions that we're going to think Think about when we go to each station. So I want you to brainstorm in your groups as you go to each station and think what learning styles are happening in this station. In this activity, what, how are the kids engaged? Then you're going to talk about would this activity even work in your classroom? Why or why not? You're going to talk about which age group because maybe you are in preschoolers or you have two-year-olds and there's, they can't read so obviously you couldn't do this activity but how could you adapt this activity to their age group? Um, so think about what age group the activity would work best with, and then how you could use the activity, activity different in your classroom. So as we're going and creativity strikes, like, hey, this would be great in my classroom, but I would do this instead, or I would add this to this activity. So it's gonna be a big brainstorming session. We're gonna come back together after you've done some of these activities, and we're gonna go through each one. And we're gonna talk about it, and then talk about what that actually would look like in our classroom room and how that child would learn through that activity. Does that work for everybody? We're going to get up and get moving. Okay, so I'm going to explain each station and then I'll let y'all break up into the groups and go to each station. So in station one, we have a mural station and that one's right over here. And you are going to read a story and then it's going to um, tell you to draw a picture of the plague that stood out to you the most in the story. So you're going to read this story, talk about it with your group, and then you're going to actually draw and add to our mural on the wall. And then station uh, two, we have our sand or rice dig, and there's pictures down in the tray, and you're going to use the uh, paintbrush to actually wipe away the sand or wipe away the rice, and you're going to find the pictures there and continue the activity that I asks you to do in station two. In station three, we have our hopscotch, which is right here. And so it will have you um, complete the hopscotch and you can talk about different ways that you can use this in your classroom, how you could do it differently, would the kids be able to do it? And so I will move to station three. Right here we have station four, and it's our crazy, uh, crazy voice memory verse. So they're going to instruct you to use different verse, voices as you say the memory verse. We have station five, which is a memory verse challenge. So you're going to remove parts of the word, uh, words of the verse as you memorize it. Right, so if you remove a word, then you've got to remember that it's there, and then remove another word. And so create a different way. How could you make this a challenge? How could you make this a race between two groups? So talk about that in your group. And then station six is our drama. So you will have a story to read, and then you will act it out. 
Okay, so we're going to give you about two to three minutes at each station. And so if you'll just kind of go to each station when there's about four or five people at a station, look for a different station. And then I will give you the go ahead to start. And then I'll let you know when it's time to move to the next station. Are there any questions before we break up into our groups? No? Nope. Okay, you can take your papers with you, take notes, and we'll come back together and discuss it when you're done. Okay. Well, how did you enjoy those activities? Getting up and moving around? Do you think your uh, friends in your classroom would enjoy that? Yes. yes. We're going to talk about each one, each station, and um, I would love for you um, to give me your feedback so that we can learn from each other. Something that you feel like wouldn't work in your classroom, something that you feel like would, and maybe a way you would do it differently so that we can all learn from each other in this breakout. So the first station was the mural, right? Where they read a story and then they drew something on there. So what learning styles would that be? Would that be helpful for? Visual. Mm -hmm. If you're reading it out loud, reading the story out loud, talking out loud, that would help for an auditory learner. Very good. Um, <laughs> correct. Kinesthetic, because they're going to be moving, they're going to be drawing, that kind of thing. And I think I told one of the groups that when I was reading, I was trying to uh, get a story that would be catchy as well, because at first I was like, ooh, the plagues. That's not a great story to give your fifth grade boys, right? Because no telling what kind of mural they're going to put up on there. But then at the same time, I was like, you know, that's what we want, right? We want them to go home and be like, hey, mom, my teacher, Miss Lauren, she let me draw blood uh, in the river. Or she let me do this plague. Or I got to draw a locust today. Like, that's what's going to keep them um, engaged, right, in their memory. They're going to remember that class. They're going to remember that lesson in that Bible story. So at first when I picked it, I was like, oh, I've got to change. It. I'm like, no, that, that's right. That's, that's, what, that's what we want them to know. We want them to be engaged. We want them to have fun. So how do you feel about that in your classroom? How could you use that? What would you do differently? Any ideas? I think it was good. Well, depending on how many children, you might assign each one a play. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. And if you don't didn't want to do it as a whole group, it could be one of your stations or rotations that you have in your class where you might have an aide or a student that's in your class helping you and they tell a story and pick apart and then the next group comes and pick apart and then it all tells one story at the end. So there's lots of ways to be creative with it. You can lower it for our younger friends. So you have, you know, twos and threes and fours and we keep it lower because that's high obviously for our level. Um, so it's something that can be done in the preschool age all the way up to our fifth and sixth graders. Um, one of the ladies in the class before this uh, mentioned that it's a good extra activity that you can keep up on the wall and say your pastor goes over, you know, that 10 or 15 minutes and you, you ran out of activities to do. You have that there for them to go and they've gotten done with their activity and they can go do that. You don't use it that week, leave it up and it's ready for the next week, right? So it can be an extra activity to do. So I thought that was a great idea uh, as well. Anything to add before we go to the next station? Okay, so our second station was more of like the dig or the, the sand and the rice, right? And so one, um, one of the trays had books of the Bibles and the other trays had creation in order, right? What happened on day one, what happened on day two? And so how did you feel about that activity? Just go ahead and say it. I know y'all want to say it. It was messy. That's right. I know. That's what we get. Yes. Um, I did a training in, in my own, at my own church with, with our, our volunteers. And I was like, okay, I'm going to see who says it first. I'm going to see who says this. And sure enough, my uh, first grade teacher was like, I am not doing that in my class. And I was like, yes, you are. So no, but um, I do think we don't have to be messy and don't have to be super crazy. Um, but we do need to remember that sometimes it's not about like us and maybe the few minutes that we have to spend extra to clean it up. It's about what's going to engage our children the most, what's going to create that learning environment that's going to help them remember and have fun. And so sometimes it's okay to get messy and it's okay to do a craft project or um, an activity that's going to be a little messy. We need to be safe, right? So obviously the sand is not going to be safe 
for our little ones that are going to put it in their mouth or the rice? Uh, what are some other things that we could use that might be a little friendlier for our younger age group? <coughs> Any ideas? Does anybody work with preschoolers, by the way? Shaving cream. You, so you could um, laminate. You could laminate the pictures and put shaving cream on top, and then they have to wipe it all away until they get to the pictures. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a Ziploc bag, and you put that gel. You can put gel in it. You can put paint in it. You can put different things in there, and then you zip it, and you um, make sure it doesn't like bust open. But then they can push around on it, and they can get to a picture. Yeah, I'll go over again. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Someone in the last group mentioned beans um, because they're a little bit bigger, but still you got to be careful for your younger ones that they wouldn't put that in your mouth. But it's easier to pick up than rice or sand, right? Um, just put some, sweep up some beans. Anything else? Miss <laughs> Kay? Um, I use this and, it, and the children love it. Mm -hmm. I have a blow-up swimming pool. Okay. And I have foam rubber. And I, you know, like, like mattresses. Yes. Okay. Get a little foam rubber mattress, cut it up in big enough pieces that you can pick them up. Mm -hmm. Like little blocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because you have to kind of egg crate. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that. That way, they're not going to, it's not going to go everywhere and you can pick it up real quickly. Pick it up easier. They're bigger pieces. You have everything mm -hmm. hidden in it. Mm -hmm. Whether it be mm -hmm. Jesus is hidden in it or whether it's animals are hidden in it or the little dig. So you couldn't hear Miss Kay. She has a little pool in her room, and she has larger, um, like, chunks. Hmm? Not every week. She said not every week. But she has. She pulls it out every now and then for a special treat. But she takes a pool and takes larger foam pieces or blocks, and then she'll hide different things in, and they can dig. So that's, that's a great idea. So just giving that uh, curiosity where they don't know what they're looking for, they're digging, it, it brings a different element in. What learners are we going to get with this? Are visual learners, auditory learners, or kinesthetic? Which one do you think would like this the best? Kinesthetic? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think they would get. Now, you could get your visual learners, depending on what they're finding, if they're putting in an order sequence on how it happened, they're looking for things. So you can get your visual in because you have objects that they're actually going to be putting in order or relating back to the story. Um, so that's a good idea. Okay, station three, we have our hopscotch. How do you feel about our hopscotch activity? How many of you played hopscotch as a child growing up? Yes. How many of you think your kids in your classroom know how to play hopscotch? They learn it. <laughs> They're going to learn. They're learning now. Yeah, I, I was so surprised with the amount of kids um, when I first did this that really don't know. Because I'm like, oh, here's your bean bag, you know, throw it. And they're like, looked at me like they didn't have a clue what to do. And then once I showed them, they loved it and I couldn't get them to stop. And they wanted to jump, jump, jump. Um, so what are some, um, some learner, how are the learners gonna learn best doing this activity for the hopscotch? Okay, kinesthetic learners because they're moving. Okay, how can I pull my auditory learners into this? Yes. Saying, saying, saying the verse. I mean, saying, well, you could do verses if you wanted. You could do a word of the verse per um, hop, sh hopscotch square. But right now we have our uh, books of the Bible. So you would jump Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. So you're repeating that. If you do it over and over, you're repeating that. Um, we put pictures here on this, but you could, you know, do your books of the Bible however you wanted to. But the visual learners are seeing it every time they hop to it. Um, if you do want to do it like your traditional hopscotch and you throw a bean bag, then they could remove that book of the Bible and then it's gone. So it has to be memory, you know, so then eventually all the books of the Bible are going to be gone and they're going to be jumping Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, right? And so that repetitive and that memory. Um, any ideas for adding this to your classroom? Any, any creative juices flowing as far as hopscotch? <coughs> I had one teacher, um, I did this uh, a couple of months ago for a training, and I talked to her, and they didn't have room in their classroom because they had a super small class with a lot of kids. So she's like, I don't even think I would have room to put this, but I love it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to get back to you. And so um, I was really excited to hear that they transitioned between one class to another class in between um, their two classes that they do, their two church hours. Um, and so they did a hopscotch in between each classes. So as they're rotating, 
participating to their other class, and she said their kids love it. So it's a good transition. It helps them transition from this class to that class, and so they used it that way. And so I think they do different memory verses for the verse for that week or that month, and they put the memory verse in their hopscotch out in the hall to their next class. So I thought that was great. I always love it when people get back to me like, hey, we did this, and it worked great. So um, that's the goal, right? We want to be work, all work together to creatively brainstorm ways to make our, our class engaging so that our kids ultimately are bringing the Word of God home and hiding it in their heart, right? And so that's our goal. Okay, so anything else about Station 3? Okay, Station 4. Right here we have our memory verse, our crazy memory verse. How did y'all feel about that one? The first group killed it with the opera. Just have to say, that was awesome. Um, so what learners are we engaging during this? Okay, auditory, visual, because we're reading it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're repetitive, right? We're reading it the same verse over in different voices, because we're saying a different voice every time. Um, the kids love this. Um, one of the things that I always try to do just to help with classroom management, because we wanted to get we wanted to get wild and crazy a little bit, right? We want them to have fun. We want them to create their own. Like someone will be like, Cow, let's do a cowboy voice or let's do this. But I always end it in my whisper voice so I can gain control of the classroom. So, okay. So the very last one I do is the whisper voice. Okay, boys and girls, you did really good. Let's go back to our seats right now. Because it can get loud and crazy when you do this activity, right? Um, and so that's just a little tip. Just end in a whisper voice. It works every time. Um, but how, did you feel, how do you feel about this uh, working in your classroom for the age groups that you work with? You think the kids would enjoy it? Mm -hmm. Something easy as a filler? Like you can do it if you've, if you've done all of your activities and you have some extra time. It helps with Bible memorization, right, for them to memorize that verse for the, for the week or the month, however your, curriculum, however your curriculum does it. If you're in preschool, how would you do this differently? Because obviously our preschoolers can't read yet, can't read. right? So what would, how, could, what, how could we still do this activity? Yes, Ms. Julie? Well, especially if normally their verses are not as long. Mm -hmm. I would assign each child a word and a voice. Mm -hmm. And so then they go down the line and they each, and then oh, yeah. you mm -hmm. keep rotating. Mm -hmm. So eventually they've said the whole verse. They've said the whole verse. Mm -hmm. And if it's short enough to repeat after me, like I'm going to say it in a grandma voice first, and then you're going to repeat it in your grandma voice after me. You know, so even, even repeat it if it's short enough to be able to do that. So that's very good. Anything to add about that before we move on? Okay, so our station five is our memory verse. Um, it, we, I call it like hidden word challenge. So there's different ways that you can do that. You can make different relays, but ultimately our goal is to help them memorize the verse, right? Which learners would be engaged in this activity? Okay, okay, all three. If we're saying things out loud, right? If we're, we're voicing it as a team out loud, if we're, we're running, we're moving, we're engaged, um, we're reading the words, we're moving them around the order of the words, right? Um, so there's different ways that you can do this. You can mix it all up, all of the post-it notes over there. We can mix up every word and they have to go put it in order. Um, you can do it where it's a relay where everyone has a word and you're having to run down and put it in order. You can do it where someone comes and takes a word off. Right now it's missing, and as a team, you have to say the whole verse together. And then someone else goes and removes another word, and then you have to say it all together. That's when you're going to get your repetition, and then by the end, all the sticky notes are gone, and they've memorized the whole verse, a verse that they didn't even think they could memorize. Because that's one of the problems I'd have in some of my classes. They're like, Miss Lauren, I can't do that. That verse is too long. I'm not good at school. I can't memorize. This is too hard. I've heard it all. The second you do this, and you just memorize that whole verse. You said you couldn't do that, and look at you. You did, because they're, doing, they're learning without even realizing that they're learning, because we're adding that fun element in. And so that's a really fun thing. Also, if you're brave enough, these are always fun, because they have to go down and slap the word. So like, what word is next? So you, you do a relay, and you run down, and the word is the. You know, and then you slap it, and then you run back, and you give it to the next person, and they're running to slap the next word. You know, so anytime that they can do this but not hit their friends, um, it's a really fun activity, um, and they like it because they think that they're not allowed to do this, right? So anything that you allow them to do that they think they're not allowed to do is fun, and they're going to remember it. So getting to slap the words of the verse are always fun with this. 
Um, and then the last station is station six. And that is our drama station where they act out a story, which we've been doing that um, for ages, right? Being able to tell a story through drama. So how, how does that engage our learners? I heard all three. So all three. So for reading the story out loud, right, that's going to help our auditory. Did you have something to add? I did, I did that with my preschool class, and we had a box for a boat. Mm -hmm. We had a rug that had the little sea creatures on it. Mm -hmm. And we had them read out loud what they were reading. Mm -hmm. And then we, I had a net. I didn't really have a net. I used like a laundry thing. Like a laundry basket? Kind a, of like, well, it was like oh, a, a bag. bag. Okay, a laundry bag. bag. Yes, 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 yes. And then I had goldfish in a, in a Ziploc bag. And so they had to throw the net over and then, and then somebody would put the fish in there, catch the fish, bring it in. So that, they loved that. So would you say that that was definitely a story that they remembered and they were able to go home and tell their families? Mm -hmm. It's Miss Catherine, right? Yeah. So Miss Catherine um, was able to use drama, right, for them to act it out, to remember the story, and then also get goldfish in return. I think that would be the highlight, is that they got some. They're like, oh, my gosh, I, got, I went fishing today, and I got goldfish, Mom and Dad. That was great, you know. Um, so any elements that, that, that add surprise um, to our lessons, I think, are something that adds um, a memory that they're going to remember. So that goldfish, that snack, the fly swatter, actually having to have shaving cream in the class or getting to dig in sand, all those things are kind of a surprise because a lot of teachers don't like to get out of their comfort zone and have different activities in the classroom so that child's going to remember and they're going to want to be a part of your class and they're going to be can't wait to get to Miss Crystal's class because she has all of these fun <laughs> things. Um, the, the last class that I was in training they were like do you do all six of these stations every Sunday? No. No. No, no, no. You just pick something every now and then that adds that surprise element or that gets them active and gets them moving and creates that excitement in your classroom and you're going to have your kids. Um, one, of the, the, one of the people in the last class, they were like, well, how do you do classroom management if all of this stuff is going on in your class? And that's a whole nother um, lesson in itself, you know, training on classroom management. But I have found the more fun that you have in your classes, the more control you can have because they're ready for the next thing. They're ready to learn. If you listen to this to end this story really quick, I'm going to tell you this awesome story. And then we have all this, this sand and this rice over here, and you're going to get to yeah. do this activity. Yeah. But I need you to listen right now. You have something to use to gain their, their attention and their control in the classroom because they're excited and ready for what's going to happen next because they, they, uh, they just know that something fun is coming. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do it all, but if you just have one fun thing, um, it, it helps all around and they get super excited. Um, any other stories about adding a drama ele element or acting out um, that you would like to add? Oh. Mm -hmm. Ms. K? Okay. I want to be in Ms. K's class. It was the lesson of Psalm 51. And you try to get four-year-olds to sit and listen to Psalm 51. So we've had the story of David. So I talk about David having written all these wonderful songs. As you remember when he was a shepherd boy. So this is how I happen to have been on a crutch. Not a crutch, but a cane. Okay. Last week. Okay. Not because I wanted to, but because I had fallen. And um, I was, I, so since I had it, when we got to the part of thy rod and thy staff, I showed them where the cliff started and where the water started, and when they would start going to it, I would pull them gently. Oh! <laughs> you go this way, you go this way with the crutch, with the cane. They were so cute. Every one of them wanted to do it. So oh, I loved it. You were able to use that, use that cane to get them and drag them back in. Those are great. So those are ways uh, that we use our creativity, right? Um, so how many in this room would say you were naturally creative? Okay, look, there's hard, like one or two. One or two, Miss Kay, you are naturally creative. Um, <laughs> So we, are, we always look at ourselves like, oh, I don't know that I can do that, or I'm not that creative. But we are. We're created in the image of God, and God is creative, right? So we have that in us. Um, but we also have Pinterest and Mr. Mark's classroom and um, other teacher friends. Um, and so I am not, I mean, I love to be creative, but I'm not naturally creative. I have to work for it. I don't come up with these things on my own. Um, sometimes I can get an idea from something else, but something else has to like help me get 
there, um, but it's possible and you can do it. I promise that you can do it. So I'm gonna give you a test. I'm gonna show you that you can do it. Okay, so do I have time? Okay, a little bit of time. If I were to, to give you these, so these are paint rollers, right? So if I were to give you these in your class and these tennis balls and you have a Sharpie and painter's tape, what are you gonna do? Put it all over. Yeah. You're gonna do what? Put it all away. Put it all away. <laughs> no, you're not. You're gonna create a fun activity. Hmm? Okay, use it like a shuffle board. Okay, so these can be like little rollers where you have your tennis balls, right? Okay, so this is a fun activity that's engaging, but how are we going to learn? How are we going to get a biblical, um, you know, whether it's from our Bible story or from a verse, what are we going to do? You can write verses on the tennis balls. Okay, yes. you can write verses on the tennis balls. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. pictures lined up on the floor close to the wall, so mm -hmm. the ball hits it. Mm -hmm. You can have your story pictures either in, in order or however it is, a review on what happened, you know, if you're doing like the gospel project and the things are in order um, from what you've learned over the past couple of weeks, you could push your balls over to the story that it pertains to. You could tell the story and they could match it to the picture. Mm -hmm. You could do Old Testament and New Testament. So you have, to, you have an Old Testament team and a New Testament team. You have multiple and you could push all the Old Testament balls to one side, all the New Testament balls to the other, see who can win. Do you think that kids will um, learn and be engaged and excited about this activity? Yes. I do too. I, I wasn't sure. I'd, I'd never done it. I was just like, oh, this is cool. I'll bring it to my conference. Um, and so the last conference I taught, I told him, and then I got a phone call from a children's minister, and he was like, because he teaches fourth and fifth grade boys as well, and he was like, my kids play it every Sunday. They know like all the books of the, of the New Testament now because they cannot wait till we get this out and they love it. And so there is learning. So we can be creative and we can be fun, but at the same time, we have to make sure we're bringing that element either where they're memorizing scripture or memorizing the Bible story because that's what we want them to take away from it. Not just fun and that Miss Crystal's class is the best class to go to, but that they're learning, right? Spiritual growth is happening. Okay, what about if I... Okay. Oh, this this one's fun. Okay. What if I give you these and dry erase markers? What are you going to do? Pictionary. Pictionary. I like it. Pictionary. What else? What could we do with this? Um, emotions. Like okay, emotions. Story where somebody's sad and then happy, mm -hmm. and, uh, then they can put that in front of their phone. That's right. So that's one of the ideas I saw. Okay, Mr. Anthony, I'm going to use you. Come here for a second. You didn't know you are going to be called on today, did you? Okay, so hold this in front of your face. So we're learning about how God created us, and, and Anthony is super special. God created him, you know. Um, so I'm going to draw Mr. Anthony's face, right? Right? So this is like... You know, and the kids get to draw each other, and it's not really like you, so. There you go. Okay, look, look, now pull it away. That's, that's you. There you go. Um, so, but how many of you think the kids would love that? I mean, it's super easy. You just wipe it off. You go to the next one, um, and this is something, a fun way that you can grab stuff that you already have, right, and make it fun. What about um, taking it and putting it on top of your Bible story picture? right, or a verse that they're needing to copy, you know, and trace over. You know, so this is something that's easy that we have laying around. You, um, you have lots of lids, and you don't know where the containers went, you know, like me. I'm like, where does this, where's the container that goes with it? So keep it if it's clear, and you can do a fun activity. Um, but all of this uh, to say, let me see if I can go to the next one, if it'll let me. Um, all of this to say is that we can be creative teachers, you know, whether we believe it about ourselves or not, God created us, so we are creative beings, um, and we can be fun. We can take objects, and we can take things that we wouldn't normally have in our classroom, and we can make it fun, and we can make it engaging, because our goal is for them to leave ready to tell their brothers and sisters about the fun that they had and what they learned. Um, I love hearing families and parents come to me and saying that their kids came home in the car and would not stop talking about what their Sunday morning lesson was about. Um, what hurts my heart is when a parent will say, I asked Sally what she learned today, and she's like, I don't know. 
You know, our kids should be able to say we did this and we learned this um, because that's what we want to do as teachers. And y'all are all capable of it. I know that you all are. Yes, Miss Julie? Well, before they leave, I always ask mine. Now, when mom and dad ask you what you learned today, what are you going to tell them? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yes. So do a little bit of a yes. I, exactly. I, I can talk Mm -hmm. Well, and that's an evaluation. That's an evaluation for us because if they look back at you and they can't say it, then we need to say, how can we regroup, right? And how can we do this differently next week? Because we want them to be able to, to say what they learned and how they learned and be excited to tell somebody else. Um, I am so thankful that y'all are here. I'm thankful that you love the Lord enough to give up a Saturday morning to come here and that you love your kids. I'm going to pray for you as we get dismissed because we're out of time. Um, so let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for these friends in here, Lord, that, um, that love you and love their children and want to see these little hearts change, Lord. Um, I pray for them. I pray that you give them the wisdom. I pray that you give them the words. I pray that you um, are able to work through them so that these uh, sweet little friends in our classes, Lord, can see you and see your love through us and through each one of these volunteers that are here today. Help us be creative. Help us share your words with those around us. In your holy and precious in name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you.